Come on, y'all. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> I ain't messing with y'all. God bless y'all. Uh, one day at a time, man. Little by luck. Amen. Uh, hope y'all got some rest. I hope y'all been enjoying y'all week. <coughs> and uh, keep on taking y'all time, man. That's what it's all about. Don't get carried away by what you don't got or by what you do got. Uh, be, uh, I mean, I said that wrong. Don't be, yeah, don't be carried away by what you don't got. I like what you guys said. Be happy what you do got, man. Word up. If you ain't got nothing but a little bit, if you got somebody that's there for you, love you, <clears throat> if you got somebody to wake up with and look over to your left or your right, you know what I mean, and be there with you, appreciate that because you can't put a price on that, man. People try to put a price on things and get carried away with stuff. Be happy with the people you got around. If you got children around you, <laughs> thank God for your children that you can wake up and, and be there. You know what I mean? Try to do better. Uh, a little bit by little, man. Be, but be happy. You know what I mean? It ain't about don't get carried away, but be happy. If you got a husband or a wife, be happy with your husband or your wife that God gave you, man. And stop taking them for granted. Uh, appreciate the little things. If you got family in your life, you know, a great grandma, grandma, whoever, y'all better appreciate them. And that'd be the thing. I'm going to get them started. I don't want to get carried away. But anyway. All oh, glory, honor, praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Got to give credit, honor, and glory to who is to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, today is Friday, yeah, November 25th, 6.04. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear Friday, that this smoky voice pop up, Miss Friday, Craig, you ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Go do this and do that. <laughs> or that. That's monkey doing crazy. And I always laugh when I see that part. Anyway, listen. Uh, you know, I notice some people, uh, people be talking about not having a good time and this and that or whatever. People be having things and still don't be able to have a good time. Let me, let me tell you what. <clears throat> this is why that is. Go to eat classes. Uh, E-Class e is chapter 3. Bear with me if I can get there. Give me a second. E-Class is chapter 3. Uh, <clears throat> E-Class is chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, Brother Solomon said, What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful and it's time. <clears throat> I like I like the King James Version. It says, he has made everything beautiful in his time. It's time and his time can be the same thing. It refers to a person, place, or a thing. When someone did it, they'd be like, who did it? <laughs> or who done it? Where was it? <laughs> it can be referred to a person, place, or a thing. In this case, it refers to God's time. <clears throat> he has said, he has made everything beautiful in its time. I love that. He has, he has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. <laughs> I love that. No one can truly explain what God been doing from the beginning. That's why with a whole lot of points and references, when they can explain where God come from, <laughs> he lost me right then and there because he can't be explained. He got no point of origin. <laughs> if you can explain the point of origin to me, he ain't God because God truly got no point of origin. <laughs> it, it, it hurt your mind if you think about it. Okay, where did God come from? <laughs> That's a question we got to wait to get up there to find out true. <laughs> where it up? It's, it's, beyond our, it's beyond our human limit. <laughs> but that that's what truly makes them that's that's what truly makes who, who God is. A lot of people you can see where they come from that point of origin. <laughs> no, all right. But anyway. Yeah, no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy. Listen, Brother Solomon said, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy, you see, and to do good while they live, you see. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. <clears throat> you see? To eat and drink and find satisfaction in what you do is a gift of God. <laughs> and where, did, where does this gift reside in? <laughs> Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, with all, with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. 
In fact, you can't love God without loving your neighbor. <laughs> you see, people, make it clear to them, Bonte. A lot of people unhappy because they want people to make them happy. <laughs> you want a blessing in your life? Be a blessing to somebody else. <laughs> Wire it up. I'm telling you, man. You, you want to you wanna make a difference. A lot of people wanna, want stuff to happen to them. Do stuff to other people that you want to be done to you. Or you want people... I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It'll be a different place, bro. Uh, you, then, then you'll be able to enjoy the things God gave you. You hear me? I'm telling you. Truly. Because without you, you can have this stuff. I'm going somewhere with this. Listen. <clears throat> people be upset about they not having a good time with this and that or whatever about on holidays and this and that. People got, people got all these people. They got all this stuff, man. Y'all can go where y'all want to go to. Y'all got a whole lot of people that like to be around y'all and, and this and that. And, and still, the people not enjoying themselves. Why? It's a lack of love somewhere. It's, it's all about them somewhere. You see, when you, when you take your eyes off of you and make it about other people, then you will find, because it, it feels good when you're doing something for other people versus when you just want something done for yourself. If it's a me, myself, and I type of thing, you ain't going to find no pleasure and enjoy, enjoyment in it because <laughs> you just you can't please yourself, bro. True pleasure. Uh, you heard them say it's better, to, it feels better to give than receive. You heard them say that it truly do. <laughs> when you get something, like you want to give something back, don't you? Like, word. <laughs> it's not about giving something back, it's, it's about giving something, man. Like, word. And if, if it's, I'm telling you, man, if it's a piece of your time, <laughs> like just going out your way, a lot of people, I'm telling you, something small, simply going out your way, that's something you usually don't do. Why are people appreciate that? <laughs> and you got to be a, or I'm, it feel it feels good when you do that, man. Versus when you want it done for you all the time. Because, <laughs> like, where if people are not here just to cater to you, uh, brother or sister, <laughs> why are you, you, it's a, it's a balance thing. You know, we help each other out. <clears throat> that's what, that's where you find joy yet. Uh, that's where a guy's blessing, man. <clears throat> uh, E-Classes chapter, <clears throat> E-Classes chapter six. Uh, Verse 18, Brother Solomon said, this is what I have observed, <clears throat> Brother Solomon said, this is what I have observed to be good, that it, that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction and their toilsome labor under the sun uh, during the few days of life God has given them. For this is their lot. <clears throat> Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability uh, to enjoy them, to accept their lot and to be happy and they're told, this is a gift. Of, this is a gift of God. You see? Word up. <clears throat> to be happy. It's a blessing, man. Only God can give you because you can have all that stuff and not be happy. <laughs> it's not that the happiness is not found in having things. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you. <laughs> You can have a lot of stuff and not be happy, but you can have stuff and not be able to enjoy it. The fact that you can, the fact that any one of y'all can enjoy it, it's a gift from God, man. Thank him and be happy. Even if it's just a little bit, you don't have to have a lot. You see? E classes chapter nine. E classes chapter nine, verse uh, seven. Brother Solomon said, Go, eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart. For God has already approved what you do. Always be clothed in white and always anoint your head with oil. This oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Enjoy life with, enjoy life with your wife. <laughs> Word up. Or your husband. Woman, if you married to a husband, wives, or if a uh, husband, if you married to your wives, enjoy life. <laughs> enjoy life with your wife, whom you love. Amen. All the days, all the days of this meaningless life. All the days of this meaning, meaningless life that God has given you under the sun. All your meaningless days. Uh, for this is for this is the lot uh, in life, and your toilsome labor under the sun. Whatever, it, uh, brother Solomon, go on and go on. But point I'm saying is, <laughs> uh, enjoy your enjoy your time with your people, man. Like where, where it's that God gave you. Uh, Always be clothed in white. Anoint your head with oil. All right. <clears throat> All right. But anyway, if I get super carried away, because I see people on here talking about it, not having a good time and this and that, and people, y'all got more than enough things to be happy with to enjoy yourself, man. The, the number one thing that be missing is a lack of love. 
You see, and people want it's rather you want something, but it's not about you wanting something. You, if you want it, if you whatever you're missing, you should give it. <laughs> now, you, if you want to have a good time, give a good time. You, I'm telling you, man, if, make it clear to him, Vontae. <laughs> Enjoy what you got around you, and and don't make it about yourself. You see, and God will bless that. Make it about other people. Like fire. <clears throat> But anyway, let me just uh, keep on going, 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 going. Uh, where was I going to? Uh, I have no idea. Where was I at? What can happen now? Go with me to Psalms 145, and I'm going to pick up where I left off. Psalms 145, I like this. Uh, Brother Davis said, uh, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I, I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Amen. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your, of your majesty. And I will meditate on, on your wonderful works. Amen. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant uh, goodness and joyful and joyful and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Amen. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people install you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Amen. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises. I love that. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. I love that. Even when the Lord brings you down, I've been brought down before. The Lord allow you to come down sometimes. Because sometimes you be too puffed up in life. I'm telling you, if, I, if, I, if God, give me some, God give me some wisdom too to hit the brakes on things. I thank the Lord. He said, the Lord said, don't, don't be like a horse and a mule. They got to be, horses and mules got to be beat. They got, or else they're not going to listen to you. Animals, you got to whip them a certain way to control them. The Lord said, don't be like that. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll do that if you got to. If, you know, if he, I don't want to beat you and whip you, but he'll do that if you got to. <clears throat> I, but I thank God he let me have to break some things because I know my life and even still <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> where, where was I going to? I get carried away. Uh, oh, faithful is the Lord. Faithful is the Lord and all he does. Amen. The Lord brings you down for a reason so he can lift you up a higher than <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> Listen. Uh, and faithful in all he does. Amen. Uh, the Lord upholds all who falls. Lord. The Lord upholds all who fall and lift and lifts up all who are bowed low. Amen. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. <laughs> The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. Amen. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. That's it right there. <clears throat> That's it right there. That's all he's looking for, the truth. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> a lot of people in a whole lot of religions believe that all mankind come from Adam and Eve. Correct. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Absolutely correct. All mankind do come from Adam and Eve. Why you say that? I say that to say this. You know, God make it real simple. <laughs> people, mankind, the people, they put rules and stuff and all this other type of stuff. <laughs> do this step, and do this and do that. You'll see it all the time, bro. Every place you go to, <laughs> in churches and stuff, you got the offerings and all this stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with it, bro. But, or I believe in supporting the church and stuff, but... <laughs> The people, they're trying to get you for your money, this and that, a whole lot of other stuff, bro. They're trying to make it about fun and fashion. <laughs> uh, God, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is all about a relationship with the people. If you got a relationship with somebody, you understand. <laughs> you got a relationship with somebody. You know them personally. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't know them. I don't know uh, the president, whoever the president is. 
I don't know who the the mayor is, and I don't know who these people is. I, I see their faces on I see their faces on the billboards and stuff. Like I know who they is, but I don't know who they is. I ain't got no personal relationship with them at all. I don't know them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's how it is with the Lord with people. You you can know about you can know about him. You can hear about him. You can see this until you know him personally. You have no relationship with him. You see what I'm saying? That's all the Lord wants. The Lord wants a relationship with you. You, I'm talking to you, whoever listening and receiving his word. I'm talking to you. The Lord talking to you. He want a relationship with you. How was that? How was that established? <laughs> okay. When Adam and Eve was found naked, what did they do? At first they hear from the Lord, as many of us do. <laughs> we can try to hide. God got away. But listen, it don't work. And then what they try to do, they try to cover themselves up. You can try to cover yourself up all you want to. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> but the Lord called Adam, amen, asked him, where were you at? <laughs> you know what I mean? He said he said he was hiding. He was naked. He was afraid. <laughs> he told the truth to God. And, and he said, who told you he was naked? Did you eat from that tree, which I commanded you not to eat from? <laughs> God didn't have to ask Adam a word. <clears throat> God is God. The Lord know everything. He don't have to ask us nothing. He know everything. But I love the fact that he gave Adam a chance. He gave us a chance to tell the truth. He gave each and every single last one of us a chance to tell the truth to him. That's all he's looking for. Why lie? Do you already know? It'll go better for you. I promise you. I'm telling you, whatever the situation is that the Lord wants you to talk to him about, like where? It'll go better for you. That's all he's looking for. Uh, it say the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Amen. That's, that's what he wants, to call on him in truth. Tell the truth to him. Whatever the situation is, Jesus says it's not the healthy that need the doctor, but the sick. <laughs> when you're sick, you know what your problem is, right? What, you go to the hospital, and what you do? You go to the people. And you, and I know it's embarrassing. I done been there. I done been there. I know it's embarrassing. You go to the little line, tell the lady, say, what you here for? And you tell, you know what I mean, people around that. It don't matter. When you're there to get help, you're there to get help. Well, when you know you seriously need help, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus is out here. You might not be able to, you can't physically touch him or whatever, but you go to him in truth. How you do that? You go you go in your room. You shut your door. <laughs> you pray to him. You tell him. You ain't got to be a big prayer. Lord, if you're out there somewhere, can you please help me? I know I'm not living right. I, I, I want to live right. I can't help myself. If he if Jesus is who he say he is, if the Holy Spirit is who he say he is, if God Almighty is real and if he out there somewhere, then he's able to help us. You hear me? <laughs> How you know that? I did it three years ago. Ten, I did it three years, 10 months, and 20, 23, whatever day this is, 25th, 25 days ago. I was in my room. I got a smoking problem. I still do blow from time to time, but it ain't like I used to be. I can. I thank God. I, I love what Deacon Smith say. I thank God for my reasonable portion of mine, just to wake up and have my little personal time. Like, And I still, you know, I got problems and stuff still. I ain't perfect. I still got problems. I still get irritated. I still got a pack of cigarettes. You know, I, you know, I still smoke and stuff. I still drink a little bit. I'm not perfect, bro. But listen, I want to change. I never had that in my mind before. The Holy Spirit was leading me to that. You don't never want to stop. You don't. The Lord, I'm telling you, man. Like I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's hard to it's hard to explain to you like I want, but I thank God. I thank God when you when you when you know you got a problem, then you can you can you can that then you could the Lord will help you little by little to fix and adjust it. You hear what I'm saying? Some people, the Lord do things just like that for, but it's, it's not about. It's, it, I'm telling you, man, it's about being truthful with the Lord. The Lord can fix me up. The Lord can take away all my problems today. I'm still going to need him tomorrow. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> because if that was the case, if God was to do everything for me, I wouldn't need him. Okay? <laughs> I'm pretty sure <laughs> that he that it, it's not meant for me to be like that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's not how this thing works. <laughs> Where? That's why people who don't smoke, who don't drink, they say that they don't, they, they, they think they don't got a problem. They got a problem somewhere, somehow. <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? They, they think it's like something. <laughs> we all got something. You see, if that was the case, we wouldn't need the Lord. We'd be, be, we'd be perfect. <laughs> Last time I checked, there's only one person who was ever perfect. That's Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Where? Nobody's perfect. <laughs> but anyway, the Lord just wants you to be truthful and honest with him, man. That's, that's, that's it right there. Uh, a lot of religions believe that all mankind come from Adam and Eve. Correct. We do. <laughs> Why you say that? Look what Adam and Eve did. When they sinned, what they do to the Lord? They told the truth to him. <laughs> and after that, what the Lord do? He covered them. That's all he's looking for. The Lord ain't looking for the, he ain't looking for your money. <laughs> he ain't looking for your house, car, cars, clothes, anything you think you can offer him. <laughs> God is God is a great God. There's nothing you can truly give him beside what belongs to him. What belongs to him? You. <laughs> you belong to him. <laughs> that's all he wants. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, you, to be truthful. And, uh, but that's it. <laughs>
And the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their he hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who loves him. Amen. I love that. <clears throat> the Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will pray, my mouth, my mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. All right. I spent 20 minutes on that. I didn't know. Let me pick up where I left off, though. Exodus chapter 15. I give you a second to get there with me. Let me sit my coffee, please. Okay. I think that I, I love I love that thing. I love that. All right. Exodus chapter 15. Uh, the people just uh, came up out of the Red Sea. I told you these people bold. You couldn't pay me to walk in that water. <laughs> anyway, Exodus chapter 15. If you tuning in, you want to check out the one yesterday where I'm picking off at. Uh, I'm going verse by verse. For any of y'all who, who, who like who like uh, watching these joints, I advise y'all to, to download the joints so just record them on your phone or something and, and and keep a junk question just in case they try to take these junk software somehow one way or another. I got like 30 phones with people recordings on me, bro. Like, cause I, I love it. <laughs> so, like, I keep them junk like where? Because they be special. They be special. I, I'm, I'm going to try to get them all put together on one junk one day when I can. But, uh, yeah. Y'all try to keep them. Y'all try to keep everything y'all can. It's all free. <laughs> They'll charge you for this stuff and this and that. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's all free, man. Uh, Exodus chapter 15, uh, verse 1, say, The song of Moses and Miriam. Miriam is Moses' oldest sister. The Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. <clears throat> I will sing this song to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Uh, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver, he has hurt, he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. Amen. He has become my salvation. I love that. I love that. The Lord is my strength and my defense. <clears throat> he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Amen. You don't know. The Lord is a warrior. <laughs> he, he fights for us. I love it. He fights so hard for us. <laughs> I love it. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was, ma was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. <laughs> Amen. And the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. Uh -huh. You unleash your burning anger. You unleash your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters uh, congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? <laughs> I love that. Who among the gods, Lord Case G, is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. Amen. You stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemies. <laughs> in your unfailing love, I love that. In your unfailing love, you will lead the, the people you have redeemed. I got to write that down. I like that. I like that. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Uh, I want to go up. <laughs> I love that. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. 
The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as a stone until your people pass by, Lord, until the people you brought pass by. Amen. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your, of your inheritance. The place, Lord, you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, Lord, your hands establish. I love that. You will bring them in and plant them on your mountain, on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, Lord, you made for your dwelling. I love that. The sanctuary, Lord, your hands establish. God, I love that. There's something special about that. The Lord reigns forever and ever. Amen. I want to go off. I got to keep reading. I love that. I like this song right here. The Lord reigns forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went to the sea, <clears throat> uh, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with, with timbrels and dancing. Miriam, uh, Miriam sang, Miriam sang th to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and drive, but he has hurled into the sea. <laughs> the waters of Mer and Elam, Titus saying. Uh, then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to, to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place was called Marah. Uh, so the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it, he threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. Hmm. There the Lord issued a rule and an instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who, who heals you. Amen. Jehovah. Uh, what is it? Jehovah Rapha. Yeah, I love that. For I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam. Uh, where there were where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees. There's something special about that. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs. Yeah, there's something special about that. And seventy palm trees, and they camped uh, there near the water. Hmm. Yeah, there's something special about that. Uh, Yeah, I got to come back here on my own time. Well, I am on my own time. <laughs> but I don't want to lose, y'all. Yeah. But I, I like it. I like this, though. I like this a lot. Y'all bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about something. Uh, I love the fact that uh, I love what the Lord said. We in Exodus chapter 15. The, the Ten Commandments don't come till Exodus chapter 20. But the Lord told them uh, right there, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, uh, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I, for, for I am the Lord who heals you. Okay? The Lord won't ask for much then. Man and quail. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 16 the title say manna and quail the whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt in the desert the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron <laughs> uh, they messing up right then and there <laughs> And the Israelites said to them, if only we had, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, 
There, we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. What? You think that's what we brought you out here for? <laughs> you think that's what? <laughs> Listen. Then the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, "I will rain down. Uh, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. And this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they." Uh, what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on other days. Listen, so Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard the grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in, in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. You know, when you come up against when you come up against God people, you're not talking. Up, when you come up against God's people, you're not you're not coming up against just them. You, in a sense, you, you being disobedient to the Lord. You opposing the Lord. Yeah. Because Moses and them, they're not doing nothing but what the Lord asked them to do. So it's not, it's not, it's not us that you got a problem with. It's really the Lord. When you got a problem with the Lord's people, it's not the people that you got a problem with. It's really the Lord. <laughs> Word up. When you're not, when you don't like something that that one of God's people saying to you this and that, because they're not saying to you for no reason. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I ain't talking to y'all for no reason. <laughs> it's God's word. Angels up there. At, I don't get nothing out of this from y'all. <laughs> I'm not. Manipulating, controlling all this and that or whatever. Uh, I'm just, I'm just reading what the Lord is saying. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm just doing what the Lord is asking to do. Uh, there's no point of me. No, I, I get nothing from it. You see what I'm saying? It ain't me. Uh, so when the people don't like something I say, it's not me. It's not me that you don't like what I'm saying. It's something that you don't like what the Lord is saying. You see what I'm saying? That make any sense to you? Like, all right. But anyway. It ain't just me in general. Whoever the Lord using the to speak to the people. If you don't like something they're saying, especially if it's coming from the Lord, some people just be mean and hypocritical and this and that. I ain't talking about that because them people just being mean. Like, where it ain't no point behind it. I'm talking about when, when the Lord using people for a certain thing and telling and talking to people directly. If you don't like something that they're saying, it's not it's not them that you don't like what they're saying. It's, it's what the Lord is saying. Because you think the people are getting on. No, it's not the people. It's the Lord speaking. Like, where? You don't like what they're saying. You, you don't really like what the Lord is saying to you, basically. Uh, who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard the grumbling. While Aaron was, was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked forward, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud, you see. The uh, El Shekinah glory, what they call it, when they can, they actually could see the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Word up! That I'm sure it was an amazing thing, and quite frightful at the same time. Cause I, the whole time, if you're asking what I'd have been doing. I'd have covered up my face. I would ask the Lord, I don't want no part of this stuff. With what these people got going on, they crying and complaining about this and that. <laughs> Word up! God been uh, taking care of us along this way. I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen. God, a good God, they give you what you want. But listen, let me, let me keep reading. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. You see? The Lord said to Moses, I have, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to, is to gather as much as, the, as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it, 
by, uh, by the omen, the one who gathered much did not gather too much, and the one who gathered little, uh, little did not gather too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. <clears throat> then Moses said to them, "No one is to keep. Uh, no one is to keep any of it until morning." However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. <laughs> You see, they kept part of it till morning, <laughs> but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. That's how God, the Lord said, I'm going to test them. <laughs> if y'all want food, I'm going to feed y'all. Gather what y'all need day by day. <laughs> the ones who gathered, the ones who gather what they need, they gather what they need. The Lord said, anything kept after a day, throw it away. <laughs> the whole point is to trust in the Lord to keep on providing you food day by day. The ones who kept extra food over for themselves, they was thinking the Lord won't go <laughs> they, they was trying to keep extra. <laughs> and it's spoiled. Maggots start to get in it. <laughs> Word. That's how God was testing the people to see if they going to keep them at his word and trust them. <laughs> word. You're going to take me at my word day by day? Word. That's how he called the people. <laughs> word. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. You see? <laughs> they didn't have the, the Ten Commandments, but <laughs> they needed them. Um, and stuff keep happening each morning everyone gathered as much as they needed when the sun got hot it melted away on the sixth day on the sixth day they gathered they gathered twice as much two almost for each person and the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses he said to them this is what the Lord commanded tomorrow is to be a Sabbath a, a day of Sabbath a Sabbath Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever's left and keep it till the morning. <laughs> On six days, uh, for five of those days, the Lord told him, gather day by day. But on the sixth day, you gather twice as much and keep and keep it. <laughs> but for those five days, he said, throw away anything left to the morning. All right. But on that sixth day, they could have kept it, and it, it wasn't going to spoil. That, that, that was showing them that he, the Lord in control of the food. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because any other day, it would have spoiled on the second day. <laughs> but it, when it, it didn't spoil, you hear me? There's something special about that. They should have been paying attention, but they weren't paying attention. Uh, listen, the Lord wanted them to rest, <laughs> as he wanted us to rest sometimes. This is, uh, save whatever's left and keep it till the morning. So they saved it till the morning. As Moses commanded, and it did not stink or or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Uh, six days you are to gather, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be there there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather. <laughs> These people tripped. <laughs> they messed up the first, the second one, and the third one. The Lord told them to gather one, gather enough food day by day, and throw anything away kept until morning. They kept it till morning. It spoiled and maggots got in it. The Lord said, on the sixth day when y'all gather, gather as much as you need and keep it till the morning. They kept it till the morning. <laughs> Word up. And had as much as they need. Uh, the Lord said, uh, y'all ain't got to go out on, on, on the seventh day. I want y'all to rest. Nevertheless, some people went out on the, on the seventh day together. <laughs> the Lord said, don't go looking for food. They went looking for food anyway. <laughs> some people got a problem with food. <laughs> they can't control themselves. They can't sit down and be still. <laughs> the Lord said, get as much as you need. You know, because it's people who go to the store every day. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude or whatever. <laughs> But the Lord said, oh, for one day, as much as y'all go, y'all go out every day, gather as much as you need. Gather as much as you need for two days on, for one, on one day. <laughs> so y'all can sit down and rest. The people can't sit down if they want to. You want to know why? You only can rest in the Lord. The Lord, the only the Lord. And how you do that? If you're being obedient to his word. It show who being obedient to his word if, if you got a rest from God. <laughs> you hear me? It ain't saying they're not safe. I'm just saying the Lord wants the people to rest. All the people, all these, all these people who being disobedient is saving in heaven. They all saved. So what you mean? It's showing who being obedient to the Lord and who ain't. You see what I'm saying? Because you can see that clearly. And the work of people's lives, 
what they're gathering, what, what's coming in, this and that or whatever. You can see who being on beat and who ain't. <laughs> you can see what's spoiling, what's stinking. <laughs> Word. You can see what's riding. I'm just saying. <laughs> Word up. Why is that? Because they trying, they doing something they ain't supposed to do. They not being obedient to God's word. God testing them. The Lord, the Lord don't tempt us, but he do test us. He tested Abraham. God will test us. Yeah, he tests us each and every single day. Word, you're right about that. The Lord don't tempt us. Satan, he tempt us. He want to try to trick us out of the spot. You see, God don't, God don't try to trick us out of the spot. He not a trickster. God will test you though. Just let you see where you at. He know where you at. He wants you to see where you at. You keep doing the same thing. You don't get it by now? <laughs> where? That's what he did for these people. <laughs> 40 years. 40 years. <laughs> I can imagine. I ain't got to imagine. I'm with some people who've been in the wilderness for 40 years. <laughs> sitting. It's not a, it's not cool for me to say that. It's actually a hurtful thing. And this story I'm reading from, I actually see a, a real version of it happen. Word, 40 years sitting in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? Word, and it ain't me, it's the people who, who I'm here with. Word, but they've been stuck in one spot 40 years. You know, they save. That's a blessing. I thank God for that. But nevertheless, uh, man. But that's how God tests the people to see who's going to keep his word or not. <laughs> and you do this each and every single day. As you see, the Lord told the people, and that's, that's quite funny when you think about it, because you got people who love to go to the store each and every single day. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you got people who love to go to the store. And the Lord said on one day, for the sixth day, you got twice as much as you need, <laughs> so you ain't got to go out. And even when they got as much as they need, what they going to do, they still going to go out anyway, because they can't sit down to rest. <laughs> Why is that? You only can rest in the Lord. <laughs> I'm telling you. Word up. Otherwise, you're going to keep on going looking for food. You got I'm telling you, it's, it's quite funny when you think about it. If you just now tuning in, go watch from what I said 10 minutes ago. Anyway. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. <laughs> then the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? That's a great question. Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where they are on the seventh day. No one is to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. You know, God actually wants us to rest, to enjoy one day from not being busy. Yeah, people, you can't stop. You can't sit still if you want to. And if you can sit still, it's a blessing from God. It's a gift. It's a gift from the Lord. When when Jesus came to the home of Martha and Mary, it was two sisters. Martha, she was got she got caught up in the instance cooking and cleaning. Jesus ain't say nothing to her about making meals or this and that. Jesus just came in. Martha and Mary, what she do? She she just sat down at his feet and was listening to everything Jesus said. When you take God at His word, He will allow you to sit down and rest. If you're not taking God at His word, if you think He wants you to do this and do this and do that, He didn't say this. He said, "Take me at my word." He ain't say, "Go fix this and go do that." The Lord don't care about your preparation, this and that. It's good if you're a prepared person and like to get the day going, this and that or that. I'm just saying, it's not about. Trying to accomplish everything for the Lord. That's what the people say in the church. The Lord said, I know your works. Y'all got this and got that going on. But you fell away from your first love. What's your first love? You fell away, you fell away from Jesus. You see? All right. You can get caught up in doing stuff. But anyway, let me keep, I'm about to get off here. Uh, the people of Israel called the bread manna. It was like corn seed, and it tasted like waf wafers made with honey. I'd love to have some. I'd love to have some of that. God feeding these people directly. You ain't got to worry about going to the stuff. Uh, but anyway, Moses said, this is what the Lord uh, has commanded. They, uh, Take an omen of manna and keep it for generations to come so they can see the bread I gave you to eat in the wilderness when I brought you out of Egypt. So Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omen of manna in it then place it before the Lord to be kept for generations to come. As the Lord commanded Moses, Aaron put the man with the tablets of the covenant law so that it might be preserved. The Israelites ate manna 40 years. 
until they came to a land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. These people, God fed these people for 40 years. They got tired of eating God's food. <laughs> the audacity. These people. <laughs> Uh, listen, anyway, let me keep going. Man, that's a great question to leave off. How long would the people refuse to obey him and keep his instructions? What do you say? That's what the Lord, that's all he wants. You know, the Lord give us something to do each and every single day. And he don't ask for much. All right, uh, how long will you refuse to keep my commands? What's his commands? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's not it's not burdensome. You see, the Lord gave the people little, little things. He told these people, he just gave these people little things to go gather food. <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite funny that the Lord always gave the people one thing. He don't, he don't tell people much to do. People make it big. <laughs> when Adam was in the garden of Eden, what did, what did God tell him? Don't eat from the tree. One command, just one. <laughs> Just one. It's not big, not a lot. Just one. Don't eat from that tree. <laughs> it's, it's not, I mean, it's not going to kill me not to eat from the tree. <laughs> Just one. One command. The Lord don't ask us to do a whole lot. Still now. It's, not, it's, it's one little small thing. The Lord asks us to do. Love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul. <laughs> the second one, just like love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's very, in fact, you can't love God without loving your neighbor. It's impossible to love God who you have not seen <laughs> and, and to hate, hate your brother or sister who you do see. <laughs> you know, it's some, or the Lord make it quite clear because <laughs> anyone who claims to love God must love their brother or sister. Anyone who, uh, Claims to love God, yet hates their brother or sister is a liar. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> you can see it clear as day. Word. That's what be the people's problem. <laughs> they, they, so, they so talk about God, this and that, God, that, yet they got problems with somebody. <laughs> bro, I got I got people, I had people did things to me, bro. I got shot, chased, a whole lot of stuff. I did things to people I ain't proud of. <laughs> but I'm just saying the whole point is, bro, all this, I ain't got no negativity towards nobody. If that was the case, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. <laughs> I could try to, but it, it ain't going to be blessed. <laughs> Or it's gonna be some made up, make believe crap. People ain't gonna feel it. That's why. That's what you see. You see a whole lot of people behind. Who y'all see when y'all see? It's just me. I ain't got no group or crowd behind me. You don't see. It's not. It ain't a. It ain't Maybelline, bro. I'm just saying. This ain't makeup. This ain't no made up crap. I can care less about the audience. I'm just saying. Just. It's, God, just being truthful with the Lord, man. Uh, Lord don't ask so much. And we all, we imperfect. We're going to have some things. We're going to have some feelings. I get irritated every day with people. <laughs> right up. Jesus got made flipping tables. I'm just saying. It's not about, uh, <laughs> right. I'm just saying, man. What the Lord asks us to do, it's not big. It's, it's burning, uh, his burning light. <laughs> yeah, he don't ask us to do a hundred things. It's very simple, bro. The Lord said, Forgive somebody as you want to be forgiven. <laughs> Word up. Love somebody like you want to be loved. It's simple. It's real simple. You want you want mercy shown to you. You in a situation. You need some mercy. Show somebody mercy. God will bless you. you know I'm telling you. You want you. Everybody want a blessing. Be the blessing for somebody. God will do it for you. Word. Let me get off here. Y'all keep on asking the Lord for the Holy Spirit. He gonna give it to y'all. He gonna give it to you. The Holy Spirit leading leading you to Lord Jesus now. He gonna uh, and Lord Jesus is gonna lead us to be home with our Father in heaven one day. Amen. Y'all keep praying for him. I keep praying for y'all too. Y'all enjoy yourself and take your time, man. God keeps saying that. Take your time. That's what it's about. Amen. I see y'all again.